Hi, welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 57, All the Small Things, and I am your host, Steph, also known as Knitting Samurai. The RAV group is going strong, so go over and chat it up over there if you're interested or you just like to see what's going on. There's a show blog. No, there's a blog with show notes on it that you can find at Knitting Samurai Plus One. One dot blogspot.com and I just need to send a great big thank you to all of you who jumped on to iTunes and gave me star ratings and an even bigger thank you to those of you that um, left reviews. They were so sweet and so kind. Thank you so much. I was not looking for that. I just wanted some stars so thank you so much but I do need to call a few of you out and say thank you to FW Knitter, S. Kent Stewart, Heather Vereen, His Handmaid, Kathy True, and Oregon Lynn. Oregon? Yeah. Thank you so much. That was very kind of you. So, uh, I think that's all I have for side stuff. Um, I, I can't resist. I have to tell you this right away. So yesterday was Father's Day. Here in the U.S., it is June 17th. I just realized, I put him down to bed and I didn't even turn on the monitor. And I'm hearing banging right now, but I'm not hearing crying, so I think we're all set. <laughs> Yesterday was June 17th, Father's Day. No, today is June 17th. Yesterday was Father's Day. So Roland and I took Steve to the beach, and we had a very good time at the beach. And it was an overcast day, and the beach was pretty empty. We just went for a couple hours in the early morning, because we are morning people. So, um, I recorded some footage that I thought you might like to see. <laughs> it's a big one! Gonna get you! In the water is fine, Yeah. Yucky! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you. We just had a time jump there. So while I was getting the monitor, my mother called. And so now it's like an hour later because we're chatting. And tonight is part one of the season finale of The Voice. And so we're both super excited. Go Michelle. Go Michelle. Okay. Let's talk about knitting. Okay. Shall we? Yes. Uh, graduation socks. So the socks that I cast on using Opal. Um, save the seas. The first one is finished. So these are just a two by two rib, my standard toe up construction that I like to use uh, with a heel flap. I knit the, this one sock in like four days almost and then I finished the leg between last week and this week. And I'm sick of looking at them. So this one's going to get put in hibernation or something because I can't look at it anymore. <laughs> To be honest, I just, so being so focused and intense on this one thing, I don't knit like that anymore. I used to knit like that, and I'd bang out a pair of socks in a week when I was focused. But I think the fact that it's pretty mindless knitting, and um, 
I'm not compelled by the colors. Like, they're pretty, but they're not driving me on, if that makes sense. Made it so I was just like, am I there yet? Am I done yet? So this one's cast off. I put the, uh, we stained the cake, and I'm just going to let it sit and marinate for probably a month before I finished sock number two. But I just wanted to show you that, see, I did make 50% mark. I do have a hope. So that's that. Um, the other things to talk about. So last week, I need to move my notes closer because I don't have my glasses on. Last time I showed you my arm warmers, or I showed you the big long gauntlet one. Didn't touch that one. I'm not feeling inspired by it, so put that on the back burner. It'll come back at some point, I'm sure. And then cat hair, something floating in my nose. I've been knitting with alpaca, and it's been really irritating my allergies, so I don't know what's up with that. But um, the grace also didn't touch that this week, but I will. I will. I was just not in the mood. Not in the mood. What I was in the mood for were some quick small projects. So all the small things. I cast on one, two, three, four new projects. So I am going to show you all of those. But before I do that, I do want to share that my uh, Patton's Croy socks. I'm sorry, I don't remember where I was last week. Which I wonder if you watch several podcasts back to back to back. I don't do that anymore because I get small bits of time to watch podcasts. And, but uh, if you watch several back to back and if every week the person is like, I don't remember where I was. I don't, if it's funny to you because five minutes ago you just saw it and you know exactly where there is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm uh, waxing philosophically about podcasting. Really? <laughs> so here's the first one. That one's finished. And here's the second one. I am one row away from starting my... Um, heel increases to make the gusset. So Linus is sneaking up on me right now. He is eyeing my lap and saying, ha ha, it's going to be mine. Linus is always in my lap. <laughs> so that's it for things that you've seen before. Are you ready for some new stuff? I know I'm talking kind of fast. I don't know what's up. Um, first thing that was on and then off the needles, it was the Renfrew. So this is a Jane Richmond hat from her book, The Island. This is the third pattern I knit, second pattern I complete out of that book. Um, I used Barocco Ultra Alpaca. I'm not going to put the hat on because it's going to destroy my hair. And this is color 6204 called Soft Brown. You can see this awesome little mock cable detail on the side. I love that about this hat. The construction of this hat is incredibly intelligent. Super fun to knit. Really quick, I used 125 yards, knit on US size 7, 4.5 millimeter needles. I could not recommend this pattern more highly. Well, actually I could. Okay, here's my thing. It's a, I believe it's a one size fits all. And if it's not, I knit the largest size. But I think this was for a 19 inch head circumference and the yardage was 125 so that's really low for a hat for me so even though I knit the super slouch version and I knit a little more I knit an extra half an inch thinking you know maybe my big head needs a little more width it doesn't fit when I put it on instead of having that cool slouch look that hangs in the back it let's see can I recreate how it looks on my head <laughs> It looks like that when I wear it. So instead of being, does that make sense? Since it's so stretched, it doesn't slouch out like that. It gets this sort of nipply look. It looks ridiculous on me. So this is going in the gift box. <laughs> and I think I'll knit another, but I'll add, I don't know what my gauge was, but I'll add two inches to the, um, whatever the gauge was to get the stitch count to make it a little bigger so that it will fit me. But this was super quick to knit. Of course it is a small. So I think if you had wore, had an adult small head, size small head, this would fit, no problem. And maybe if I aggressively block it, it would fit. But here's my fear. If I block it a lot this way, it's going to shrink up and I didn't want to be me. I want a slouchy hat. So all that discombobulated rambling to tell you that it's a great pattern. I will re-knit it, but more stitches for me. But if you had a small head, it'd be perfect. So do with that what you will. Um, but yay, it's 
off my needles. On and off. And that was The Renfro by Jane Richmond. Um, what else? Number two on the needles, which I have talked about before. Uh, my sister-in-law had asked me to knit her a birthday mug sweater like two days before her birthday and she lives in DC so that was a little like yeah sure I'll knit it for you but I'm not going to knit it for you right away since it's already late so I cast on with some of the oldest yarn in my stash which is um, Taki Carey K-E-R-R-Y and that is a 50-50 uh, alpaca wool blind and I knit a sweater so there's the first well I don't no, I think this was the second one I knit two. I knit her one and I knit him one. And I don't know if she's planning on using them on her mugs that she's going to drink out of. But, um, I don't know. If it's for a desk decoration, she could pick whichever color she likes best. So here's the sweater. Here are the mittens. Mittens. I haven't woven in my hands yet for the hands. And this is, the pattern is uh, the mug sweater by Christina Paulson. And I used US size 6, 4.0 millimeter needles. And like I said, some of the oldest yarn in my stash. And then here's the other one. Do you love it? I love it. I hope she loves it. So this is the same, the carry yarn, um, but in a light purple color. And you can see that the the mittens are on here. The I did go to craft store and get the hooks. The hook and eye to the hook part so we could place the uh, the hands in appropriate places or inappropriate places. Aren't they cute? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Here's my only problem, right? So I'm hoping that she wants this for a desk mug. Are you seeing what the issue is going to be? Ew, fur! Or you're going to constantly be like pulling down this side so you can drink? I don't know. I don't know. So, and then it just kind of looks funny, like your sweater's too short in the front. Whatever. But I think she's really going to like it. I really like it. So, <clears throat> there you go. I need to piece this one together. It probably took me as long to seam it as it did to sew. As it did to knit. No, that's outrageous. It was close. The seaming took a while. I would say the seaming and the mittens took as long as the rest of the cozy. But... I liked knitting the rest of the cozy. So that was another quick on and off the needles, right? Small things. And then I went to craft store to get the hooks. And we, of course, had to walk through the yarn aisle. And Roland was sitting in the back of the cart. I know, like a big boy. And he was really good. He totally sat. He did not want to stand. but Because they have the smaller carts at those craft stores. So he was sitting in the back playing with all the things. And I just, I couldn't resist. I saw this yarn. It's kitchen cotton yarn. But I love this color. Isn't that gorgeous? If you're an indie dyer, you should make yarn this color. I really like it. I really like it. So, I, I was just feeling the blues. And so, I bought three skeins of this and a skein of that. And it's time for more dishcloths. <laughs> it's the semi-annual dishcloth knitting. <laughs> so, I have two done. Um, I'll probably knit eight or so, but it's spring and I'm not sure, well, it's not spring, it's summer and I'm thinking Roland might not be in the same, well, he will be in the same room come Christmas, but I'd like to give him gifts and we need new dishcloths and you can always, they're just so easy. So I'm knitting a few dishcloths. I know, such a sexy project. You love it. You're like, bring me more dishcloths. If only I had more dishcloths. I just got a little hyper there. Let me drink some, some soda. Okay. So that's that. And then the fourth thing. Fourth thing on the needles. Which is not sitting here on the couch next to me. Oh, yes it is. Okay. So after I knit those two sweaters, using leftover yarn, I thought, well, I have three skeins of this Taki Carry yarn. That's some of the oldest yarn in my stash. And wouldn't it be nice to bust out three skeins of this yarn and be able to knock them off my stash page and count it towards my 2013 goals? And so I started looking around and, oh, what can I knit? What do I, what's in my queue? What do I want to knit? That works with a worsted, very, I think it's called woolen, very hairy, uh, wool alpaca yarn. It's not going to felt, or maybe it would, I don't know. But I don't want to 
felt. And I remembered, I remembered these glorious snow buddies. <laughs> Snowball buddies, there we go. By, I didn't write down the name. Uh, Susan, Susan Cladino. So these came out last November and Mim58, I believe is her name, we met at SSK. She gifted me this pattern. And I've just been like, they are num have been number one in my queue since probably November, and I just keep looking at them going, oh, not today, not today. Well, I have to report, so let's look at the pictures again. They are super easy to knit, super easy to knit. They are the perfect teacher gift, if you ask me. And the bunny, mouse, and owl don't even look that Christmassy. Like, you can get away with not Christmassy. So, I'm doing a bunch of reindeer because I want to give them as Christmas themed gifts. This is a reindeer, that's what he, they're gonna look like. And I figured out based on the yarn, yard requirements for the pattern and the amount in the skein. So this is the brown color. It's very soft brown, I like it. It reminds me of a bunny. Um, based on that, I can do four reindeer. And then I'm gonna use a gray and do some mice, but I had to order some noses noses. I had the safety eyes that I, the size it called for, but I didn't have any noses. <laughs> I'm a mother of a toddler. <laughs> so I ordered safety noses from 6060, 6060 over on Etsy, and they've already shipped. I ordered them on Saturday. She shipped them today, so they'll be here soon. But those safety eyes and the nose go on while you're knitting, so I had to put the mouse down. That was the first one I wanted to knit, but I had to set it aside. And the reindeer I can do because they have the red pom-pom nose. So another trip to the craft store. Watch out, dishcloth cotton. I'm coming for you. Uh, <laughs> but, so, I knit some. So see, wait, wait. Oh, he didn't get his end woven in. Well, I can sort of hide it. Okay. It's my army of reindeer. Are they kind of creepy with eyes and no noses? So... <laughs> So you can see that the hat part, the colored, super fun, takes like half an hour to bang that out. The rest of the head probably took another 45 minutes. See me up, piece of cake, nothing to it. Now I need to knit lots of antlers, like four sets of antlers, four sets of ears. That's going to be more time consuming, but this is what I have so far. And then this hat, so this is the inverse of this guy, it's going to be a pair. Probably not a pair, but um, so another reindeer hat. And then I also, these two I set aside are going to be mice. So the mice, it's a sweater and not a hat. So it's from the bottom. So I'm going to do a couple mice. Um, everyone I know I think is going to get a reindeer. Okay, probably not because I'm only going to knit four. But I'm going to give these out and super quick to bang these out. There's one antenna, antler, not an antenna. Super quick, so much fun. Oh my God, all the color combinations you can put together. She recommends doing three colors. So this has some dreaming color, some shamrock, nitpick shamrock. And then I think this is a little of the Andes is the third color on that, but they're so cute. Oh, I just want to eat them. <laughs> this one is shamrock, one of the Andes and then the carry. But I love them. I, they make me feel happy. So happy! And I was working on them while I was listening to We Free Men by Terry Pratchett. Uh, Leslie of the Knit Girls recommended it, at the audio, and I went to get it, and so cute! So cute! You should be listening to that book, too, if you like. I'm going to compare it to Narnia. So, it's very cute. That's it! Those are all my small things. All the small things. Yeah! So I'm excited to finish working on those, to bang out the rest of that yarn. <clears throat> Goal achieved. Finish my dishcloth. Sew up my mug cozy. The hat is finished. Ends are even woven in. That's amazing for me. Um, yeah. I also ordered some new yarn. I did a pre-order to Inspiration Dye Works. Her gray black and her gray. The hot pink and gray and the Steelers color, the gray and yellow. Don't tell Steve it's Steelers. Maybe he won't notice. Um, we'll tell them it's Bruins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were totally speaking to me, so I pre-ordered those. And then the new knit scene, craft store purchase. I know I should have gone to the LYS, but have you seen it? 
There's a lot of things in here I like. See, I have some tabs. You want to see? Okay, so this is the knit seam. You're going to give me a season somewhere? No. No. Wait, spring 2013. Oh, so I'm behind. Oh, well. I will show you this first pattern, which is a place for an eye cord. That's not the name of the pattern. It's called the Squirrel Slouch. I really like that. The the eye cord part intrigues me. I'm sure I would complain like crazy knitting it, but the zigzagginess, I think that looks cool. And I'm I'm kind of liking the slouches. So um, these fingerless gloves called the Caution Mitts by Rebecca Blair. I think you're really only going to be able to see the top one. Are knit on the bias at a 45 degree angle. I really like them. I thought about um, using some of the carry for this and working through that, but I didn't like two of the colors together well enough to do that. So, but I could see that in my future. I think that would be fun. I also really liked the Rockafall, Rockfall sweater by Mari Chiba. Chiba? Chiba, probably. Has this great lace work on the yoke. And I believe it's knit bottom up, which I haven't done one of those before. Have I? Maybe I did with the place to Aaron. I can't remember because I remember knitting the sleeves, so I must have. Oh well, it's been long enough I forgot how to do it. <laughs> um, I also really liked. Oh uh, yeah, but no. I like this shawl, but I mean shawls are. There's a lot of shawl options out there that are great. So um, I think this is a very pretty simple sweater that would look great in linen. The Lost Garden Tea by Jean Chung. Definitely a lace trend here. I have a, a marker, but no pattern, so I don't know what happened there. Oh, and then this one. This is the Adele Wise cardigan by Cassie Castillo. Hope I didn't butcher all that too much. I love the color work. I love the short sleeves. Not so wild about the way the button band construction looks, but maybe I could fix that. Um, as you know, I always love color work. It's I've done a bit of it in the past. It's more aspirational, inspirational for me at this point in my knitting because of little hands and small stuff is fun right now. <laughs> but I was thinking, looking, I, I was considering looking up the smallest size, checking how far off that is, and if I can tweak with gauge. Probably not. It's probably knit in a fingering weight yarn. Most color works are. There was a way I could knit this for a rub instead of for me. I mean, that's like a quarter of the size. He's a lot smaller than I am, so I might, I might tweak that one. But there you go. That's what I found beautiful and lovely in the knit scene spring 2013. And here we are at the end. <laughs> I hope you have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Enjoy what's going on in your knitting world. Take care. I love you. Mwah! <laughs>